Shrunken Heads, Nazis, and the Nuremberg Trials. This and so much more in this episode of Ripley's Believe It or Not. How does a Chinese man get his head shrunk in South America in 1600 AD? The answer is quite simple. Early historical records show us that the Chinese used to trade from Ming China all the way to South America using an old Spanish galleon trading route. Now, this particular Chinese shrunken head is the only one known in existence, and we have carbon dated it twice, and it is about 400 years old. Now, this poor soul in here was probably either a missionary or a tradesman going through that route to gather goods, and apparently things didn't end up quite so well for him. Shrunken heads in Siberia? What the what? You've probably never heard of parapsychologist and biologist Vasilevich Varchenko. He was a Russian guy, really weird. And just like the Nazis, the Bolsheviks were extremely interested in anything that could give them an edge or give them more power to win the war. And this particular guy who went on expeditions looking for semi-mythic and paranormal objects all over Siberia. And they found, among other things, this extremely disturbing and very rare shrunken faces. Uh, they were used for shamanistic rituals and they were used to communicate with the spirit world. And that was what they were trying to do, connect with the source of power to give them the edge. How can you tell if you have a real shrunken head or just a fake? There are three types of shrunken heads and this is how you can tell them apart. Sansas, which are the authentic, traditional, ritual shrunken heads, have very narrow faces, are very, very dark, and they look almost non-human. They have the traditional ties, which are very, very long, and sometimes have some decorations like this one. Number two, and you'll be able to see the difference right away, are souvenir shrunken heads. Oh yes, you can take this home with you. They look much more human because tourists are much more interested in the face is looking like a real face rather than the authentic thing. Everybody wanted one. So a whole industry sprang around shrunken heads. People would actually go rob graves, take off the heads and shrink them so that you could take your vacation souvenir home of somebody's head. And finally, the third type is the fake ones, which are basically not really shrunken heads. They're just made out of skins of animals, molded to look like a head. It's little slits on the eyes, little holes in the ears, and that's about it. Sloths, the tofu of shrunken heads. Just like tofu is a poor substitute for meat, sloths were also a substitute for real shrunken heads. Now, there are two reasons. Number one, Javaro kids would use sloth heads as training wheels to practice their skills so they could graduate to real human heads. Now, there was a second reason that's divided in two parts. Number one, if you killed a relative, you were not allowed to take their head. So you would use a sloth as a standing for your relative. Number two was even more practical. You were in the middle of a battle. It was really hard to take the head of the warrior that you just killed. So you would use a sloth later on, which was much safer. Shrunken heads, Nazis, and the Nuremberg trials. Here is the connection. Everybody's aware that the Nazis committed unspeakable atrocities during World War II, where millions of people were murdered. During the Nuremberg trials, there were a lot of things that were collected as evidence against the Nazis. Now, there were two particular items that were found in their stash. There were two shrunken heads. The story goes that two Polish uh, Jewish prisoners tried to escape, and they were captured. Subsequently, they were killed, and their heads were shrunk. Now, this in here, it's an ugly replica of one of the authentic heads that was actually used as evidence in the trials. Now, later on, it was found that none of the heads were really from Jewish prisoners. They were just shrunken heads from South America that the Nazis had collected in their attempt to, you know, gather the unusual, the weird, and the bizarre. Believe it or not. <music> Want to fill your head with more of the bizarre, odd, and unbelievable? Subscribe to our channel and visit our website, replays.com, for show notes. Javaros believed that the sloth was the only animal capable of forming an avenging spirit, which was apparently really important. Have you ever really looked at a sloth? They all smile. How can this creature ever be evil? <laughs>